Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. Um, so, tonight I'm going to read a message, and it's, it's a long message. I'm going to read the whole thing except for the identifying information in it because there are things that I think need to be addressed other than just the final question. Um, I feel weird getting so many of these questions lately because, <laughs> you know, I, I don't own any more. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Anyway, so uh, I think I'll ask here, since it is sort of relevant and I couldn't find an email to contact you with. Let me stop for a second. Twitter, uh, Facebook, you can go to the fifth column main page and, and send a message through there and eventually I'll get it. Or you can leave it in the comments section. It may take two weeks, but eventually I'll see it. I try to read all the comments. Um, okay, I'm trans, and I've been out of the closet for 27 years and in transition for 21. In that time, I've often felt unsafe and noped out of a lot of situations. However, I have never felt more unsafe in my life than I do now and have since the last presidential election. I do not recall a period in my life with this much anti-trans sentiment. Up until these past few years, I've never felt that I needed more self-defense gear than a can of mace and a butterfly knife. Now, though, I have been seriously contemplating buying a gun. I live in a state where all you need to buy a gun is a smile and, and the money. And you can legally walk out with it hidden on your person, a constitutional carry state and an effective stand-your-ground state. I've done a lot of reading on the subject lately, and I suppose... Since Trump left office, there's been a slowdown of gun sales overall, but a serious uptick in the uh, in gun purchases by LGB and especially T people. That's, that's true. I'm not a gun person, and I know which end or I know which end to point at the ground. But other than that, I would need to take a safety class to feel comfortable uh, with it in my home even unlocked or unloaded and locked in a safe with no ammunition on the premises. I suppose I'm wondering what your thoughts are on this. Is it a bad idea for LGBT people to be arming ourselves? Is it only more likely to escalate violence against us? Okay, last question first. No, it is not more likely to escalate violence against you. These people hate you because they've been told to. They've been inflamed by rhetoric. Um, most of them, they, they don't understand. They haven't been exposed. They're not familiar with it. And people fear things they're not familiar with. And then you have certain elements inflaming that substantially. But you are not responsible for the violence that would be visited upon you by bigots. I mean, that's not your fault. <laughs> and nothing you are going to be able to do one way or another is going to change them. You can't make them like you. Um, that's that's going to have to be a societal push. It's not something that you as an individual can do. Okay. <clears throat> uh, safety course. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. If you're not comfortable handling one, Definitely take a safety course. Take two. Take as many as you need to until you're extremely comfortable with it. It is a very dangerous tool. But beyond that, you need to learn how to win. You're talking about purchasing a firearm for the express purpose of killing someone. doesn't matter that it's self-defense. At the end of the day, that's what you're buying it for. Because you can't buy it to scare people or to ward people off when that when they're doing something, that that will escalate things. Some of the best advice I ever got was, <laughs> if you're dumb enough to pull a gun, you better be smart enough to pull the trigger. Um, the second it comes out, the whole dynamic changes. Now, about a year ago, sadly, for the very same reasons. Um, after the synagogue incident, I had somebody send me a very similar question, an anti-gun person who 
had a change of heart because of the current political climate. I made a very, very in-depth video about it and what it takes to win and what you need to learn. It's going to pop up over here at the end of this video and then below it will be the follow-up because I kept up with her. Um, I would suggest watching both of those. There are some differences because you're talking about carrying it on your person to deal with confrontations initiated by people that, well, you don't know their intent. You don't know if they're just going to walk up and say something stupid or they're going to walk up and do something stupid. And you have to be certain of that before that thing ever leaves the holster. You, you have to know. You have to be certain. If you're not, that's when bad things happen. If that comes out and it wasn't going to be a violent situation, it has suddenly become one. So you have to be very, very certain of that. You have to understand the intent. And the problem is that's going to be a surprise for you. You don't get to know ahead of time. As in her situation, she had a pretty good idea. Um, when you watch those other videos, you'll hear the phrase speed, surprise, and violence of action. Those are the things you need to win. And it'll go into more in-depth about it, but um, surprise is going to be lacking. You're not going to have that. They do because it's just some random person um, feeding off of ignorance, feeding off of bigotry. Um, do I think this is a good idea overall? Yeah, if you take it seriously. If you're willing to put in the effort it takes to learn to win, not just be safe. Um, because it's a very dangerous tool. It is an extremely dangerous tool. It's like down here in Florida after every hurricane, a bunch of people that you know have never used a power tool in their life go out and buy a chainsaw. You can see them in Home Depot and Lowe's. And you know that if you go to the emergency room that night, you'll see some of them because they can read the safety manual and they can get a good idea of how to be safe with it in theory. But they don't know how to use it for its intended purpose. And that's where it becomes dangerous. The same thing is true with a firearm. Especially when you're not talking about target shooting. You're not talking about hunting. You're talking about combat combat. It is the same thing. You were talking about life and death. So if you're willing to put in the effort to learn how to do that, then yeah, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. If you're not, don't do it. Don't purchase one. Um, it'll only lead to bad things. The pro one of the big problems in the United States is a whole bunch of people own firearms and very few of them really know how to use them on anything other than paper when you learn how to use one to win there's a, a new respect that comes along with it for the tool that's one of the things that's missing oddly enough I think we'd see less violence if people understood how to employ it better and that it makes sense. But anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.